So, Paul, we may have our potential source for what the sun is powered by. But before we do that, I have a question. So it takes a lot of energy with the strong force to shove these things together. What about breaking them apart? Okay, so let's imagine we've built a nice big nucleus of lots of neutrons and protons, like iron or uranium yep. or something like this. Now, remember that all the protons in here are repelling each other. They don't That's like right. being close. Yep. So they're, they're being all pushing. overwhelmed by the strong force that holds and so them together. So they're all pushing in all these different directions. Trying to, well, trying to go away, yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, so the, sh the strong force is very short-ranged. So, for example, the strong force around this proton probably only attracts these neighbors. It doesn't attract these ones because okay. it's so short-ranged. But this one and that one are still repelling each other because the electromagnetic force is much longer-ranged. Mm. So as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, the strong force doesn't really increase because then you attract their neighbors. But the electrostatic repulsion does get bigger and bigger because this proton is still pushing that one away. So it's essentially kind of like the building is getting a little bit weaker as the bigger you make it. That's right. And so by the time you've got a really big nucleus, the protons are on opposite sides. The only thing that's holding them together is, well, this one's attracted to that one, attracted to that yep. one. There's like a chain of sticky, but the repulsion is getting bigger and bigger. So these things are a bit like, a, I don't know, a monster, an alien, something trying to burst out. Yeah, that's right. They're, the, uh, they're, they're desperately squirming and trying to get out, um, and they're only held together by the close neighbours. This is actually why you need neutrons in these things, not just have protons, because the neutrons are very useful because they they have a strong force, but not the electrostatic repulsion. Ah, so it's essentially like it's, it's like getting free glue, right? You're getting this yes. extra stuff to stick it together without this other force of pushing it apart. That's right. So then you might wonder, why don't you just have neutrons? Why yeah. bother with these proton things anyway? Um, and the reason for this is to do with quantum mechanics, again, uh, which is to my general excuse, I have no idea what's going on here. Oh, I fully understand quantum mechanics. I spent many years of my life studying it. Now, if you remember for electrons, there's a thing called the Pauli exclusion yes. principle that says that each you only have a certain number of electrons at each energy level. Yep. Now, we were looking at that with spectra. Yes, that's right. That's why you typically only get two electrons in the bottom energy level and a certain number. Yep. Same thing applies for neutrons and protons in the nucleus. They're quantum mechanical things, and you only get a certain number in each energy level. And so let's imagine, for example, you have um, eight neutrons and eight protons. Okay. They could be sitting in the four lowest energy levels, or it could be you have the five levels of neutrons and only three levels of protons. Okay. And this is what you'd need to help stick it together, which is lots of neutrons and not very many protons. But the trouble is, there's a separate energy levels for neutrons and protons. Um, you, the energy levels here are much higher than they'd be down here. If you could somehow move those two things down there, you'd yep. be dropping energy. And the universe always likes to be in its lowest That's energy right. state, much like I, is stumped on the couch watching TV. Um, so there's going to be a very strong temptation for the neutrons to change into protons. So they naturally want to go into their rest state. Likewise, if you had a lot more protons and neutrons, first of all, that would blow itself apart, because yeah. there wouldn't be enough glue holding it together, but they might also like to convert into neutrons. Yeah. Also, if you remember the masses, a neutron's ever so slightly heavier than a proton. That's right, yeah, that's true. And so the extra bit of mass can be converted into energy and save things a bit. Oh, uh, okay. So essentially you can use that extra mass to create energy yeah. to do this transition. It turns out the extra bit of mass means that neutrons are not stable by themselves. Okay. You put a neutron all out in space by itself, it'll decay in a few minutes. So uh, the neutron needs the proton, but... The pro because of, of that inner, that These neutrons would like to decay. The only reason they can't is to decay. They'd have to jump up here to a higher energy level. There isn't enough energy to do it. That's right. But these ones, they can decay. Okay. The only reason wouldn't be is if it would cause the atom to break down in some sense. Yep. So this, you want them to be balanced because it allows everything to be in the lowest energy state. That's right. And so that's why when we look at our, our big diagram here, you see that most things are pretty close to diagonal with roughly the same number of neutrons and protons. Because it's that equal lowest energy state. Yes. And if you have too many neutrons on one side, it's likely that the neutrons will decay, producing a proton and an electron. And, it, and as you said, right, the further over you go, these get to fractions of a millisecond of them lasting. Yep. And the other way around, too many protons, the proton will tend to try and convert into a neutron somehow. Yes. So that's why most of the things lie near the diagonal line. But it changes up here. But it's curving over a bit because at these ends, the protons are pushing away each other so strongly that they need extra neutrons to hold it together. Right. 
So it's kind of like if you go back to our energy diagram, you've now shifted the neutron thing down a bit. Uh, okay. So you can be stable with a bit more neutrons because the protons are all higher energy because they're pushing away from each other, which is why the whole thing curves okay. over a bit. But at this point, roughly uranium, I think lead is the heaviest stable isotope. Yep. Um, anywhere beyond that, it turns out nothing is stable. So essentially, you just cannot get this balance enough so it's stable. Yes. You've, even with the perfect balance of neutrons and protons, there's just nothing that's going to stay there forever. So, but does that mean then it's very easy to break it apart? Yeah, so once you're past lead, it'll break apart by itself eventually. So you don't actually need to do anything. You don't need to add energy to it. Yeah. You essentially get energy out. So you can see nothing past here is stable. Nothing is black. Yep. So all the ones up here are unstable at various levels and eventually given enough time, which can be billions of years for some uranium-238, uranium I think, um, or it can be nanoseconds, they will, the, 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 all the protons are pushing apart and eventually the whole thing will rip into or something will decay into something yep. else and you get something smaller. It's very interesting to think what chemistry would be like if we changed the laws of physics a little bit here. Let's say we made the strong nuclear, strong force 10% stronger or made it a bit longer ranged. You can obviously... And instead then, of having lead as the heaviest element, we might have another thousand elements right. in there. Or if the strong force was much weaker... Yeah, if it was much weaker, you might only have, only have hydrogen. That's right. In which case, you wouldn't be sitting here wondering about how baffling it was because <laughs> you probably couldn't get intelligent life in a purely hydrogen universe. So it's this perfect balance of repulsion, quantum mechanics, gives us this particular table of the nuclei. This is like the periodic table for nuclear physicists. Yes. And it's... Um, so the curvature, because they need more neutrons to glue it together, but at a certain point it's unstable. Okay. So nuclear uh, fission consists of taking things up around here and breaking them apart. They can either break apart by themselves, like all the things that Marie Curie discovered, yep. or um, we can encourage them by hitting them with a few neutrons. So if you encourage them, you're then getting energy out. That's right. And what you can produce is a binding energy diagram. Okay. This is, remember, there's a potential drop in the middle, and this is telling you how deep that is. So the, the big drop is when yep. you add to, to hydrogen to make, say, helium-4. Yep. At this point, the repulsion isn't too important. You've only got a small number of nuclei, and they can all hug other nuclei. Yep. And so you can, you're dropping down a very deep potential, so you get a huge amount of energy out. So what we're putting here is the binding energy, how much energy there is per nucleon here. And then so it dramatically decreases as you start to get up here because you're just getting enough and enough of those that you've got to really start adding a lot more to get yeah. some energy out. So now when you add another one, sure, you're, you're falling down a potential well, but you're also adding to the repulsion, so it exactly. doesn't, doesn't want to fall in quite so well. That's so it. It gets high. every extra proton you add, it becomes a bit harder. Yep. Until you get the peak, which is... Iron 56, another element you're very familiar with. We love iron 56 in astronomy. At the other end, you're now talking about the uranium 235 or 238, um, the, long, the heaviest long lived isotopes. And in their, this case, they can save energy by breaking apart. So it's actually more efficient for them to get to something smaller. That's right. So the optimum energy, the, the best possible energy, the most stable is. Iron 56 and things close to it. I mean, being a few either side doesn't make much difference. So essentially everything wants to either go this way or this way. Yep. So this is called nuclear fusion, which is when you combine small things up to iron and you can liberate huge amounts of energy from that. This is fission, which is where you break apart heavy ones and there's much less energy, but still enough to power nuclear submarines for long periods of time. And because you're coming over to this point, you won't get fission because you just, there's, you... You're losing energy, essentially, at that point. That's right. So for any, this is like your chemical, you yep. work out, you combine hydrogen oxygen, you can say, well, if we combine hydrogen to make iron, that's the most energy you can get. Yep. Whereas going from carbon to iron, less, but still pretty big. Yep. Or uranium to iron. So somehow you've got to move things from one extreme towards the middle. That's right. 